Hello world and welcome to again to another another wonder wonder wild Welcome to another video <laughs> um, So Obviously right now cryptocurrency is huge like if you're not in it, you should get in it If you're in it, you should put more money into it um, Cryptocurrency, it's one of those things that people like aren't quite sure about yet. So um, I have a little bit in I wouldn't recommend like putting a whole bunch in but definitely you know put a little bit in um, kind of try it out see what goes on and it's definitely going to be one of those things like in the future so that's kind of my intro there i know in order to start off like there's so many cryptocurrencies to choose from like i've got go to coin market cap this is going to be what we're going to use so coin market cap lists like pretty much every cryptocurrency i think so there's a whole bunch here what we're going to do today we're going to use a coin market cap api to instantly search and instantly do research for 5,000 different cryptocurrencies um, so that's really cool. So we're gonna get into it. I will see you on the other side here. Awesome. So before we go any further, I'm gonna show you what we're doing here and how this works, and then we're gonna go into building it. So pretty much what I have here, I have a script that calls on the API, and then in that API, it's gonna go ahead and it's going to um, pretty much call the data. And for all the data, it's going to kind of sort it out, print us a data frame. And then at the end here, I have a little little bit of string formatting where it's going to go through, find a specific coin that you or a user puts in, and then it's going to print out information. So pretty cool, about 89 lines. Um, I know you shouldn't, but I will be copying and pasting some of this just to make it easier, but I'm going to go ahead and run it right here for you really quick. So uh, get that running. And then it's going to go ahead, run through. <laughs> and that took like maybe a second, and it has all the research done. And now it prompts me to enter a coin symbol. Um, so I can go ahead and do that, or I can hit one to quit. Just to show you what it's like, we're gonna go ahead and do, um, what should we do? We're gonna do Ethereum, so ETH. And just like that, it prints back the results. So Ethereum has a current price of 2,000, has changed 7%. Supply of 11 million, I believe that is. Big market cap. And it has a 90 day of 77%. So just like that, we can get some really cool research. And then it also gives us a file here. Um, so that's gonna be in Python, cryptos. Today's uh, Memorial Day, so if you're watching this, it is Memorial Day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is what we have. We have, I can go down to the bottom just to show you. And we do have 5,000 different um, cryptocurrencies. The reason you're seeing this like this is because we have the first one, if I head back up to the top, um, the first row here, that's going to be pretty much all of our tags and everything. And we have the current prices as of 30 seconds ago because for all I know, one of these could be like 20% down already. That's just how crypto works. Um, but you have the volume, your day change, everything like that. So this is really cool for research. You could do, if you want to just do the first 10, we could do the average of the first 10 here and see like... Try that again. Average. There we go. I was just copying and pasting it. First nine. Uh, so there we go. Wrong with that is number. So that's something really simple, but you can go ahead. There's a lot you can do now that you have a spreadsheet, technically a CSV, um, commonly a delimited file, is what it's called. But you can convert this. You can convert this whole thing into a table if you really want. And we can go ahead and with this table now, insert a slicer. And we can find, let's say we want to find, we'll do build. I have no idea what build coin is, but we can see now, got a price of $14.33 and all the info here. So just like that, it's really easy. Um, this is powered a lot with Excel, obviously, but I'm gonna go ahead and not save this. And we're gonna go back into the um, code here. So I'm gonna open up a new panel and then we'll kind of import that code over piece by piece so you can see what I'm doing exactly. Let's get started. All right, so before we go ahead into the code itself, first I'm going to show you the actual API. So right here is coinmarketcap.com. We have the website, all these beautiful charts and graphs and awesome information. Um, something I do like to point out 
is if you go ahead and you just try to copy and paste this into a uh, into a spreadsheet file. I'm gonna go ahead and get the first 10 here. Um, this is the reason why you want the API. Then you go ahead and paste and you get like this weird, like I don't even know. I mean the only good thing about this is you get the icons, but if you click on the icons it just sends you back. It's, it's really weird, so this is why it's good to have that API, um, so it's a, more organized and it looks a lot cleaner. And it's just easier from a data perspective to handle the data when it's in its intel like that. But that's why we have it like that. But we're going to go ahead and go to the API. So all you do is go ahead, coin market cap slash API, and get your API key now. I already have one, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. And after you sign up and everything, you'll actually see right here, it'll say, this is the free account, by the way, you don't need to pay for anything. Um, if you do want more features and you do want more API calls, definitely go ahead and pay for it. I'm not paying for it right now, I just use it like once or twice per day, which is enough credits. You can see right here, you get 333 credits per day um, and 10,000 per month, which like I said, plenty for what I'm doing. But the call that I'm doing, the, the call that I have set up that I'm going to show you, uses only 25 credits per day. So you can run it like 12 times a day, um, 13 times a day, I guess, and not even go over. So that's pretty helpful there. But this is this is just all the uh, times I've ran it. You can see here, most of this is just kind of figuring out the, uh, the API, figuring out the documentation. Which, speaking of the documentation, if you do need it, it's right here. I'll put the link in the description, CoinMarketCap, slash API, slash all that fun stuff. Um, but this is where we're going to go ahead and actually get into it. If you are using Python, you can use Python right here. This is actually the code that I used in this first part that I'm going to show you, so it makes it really, really easy to kind of connect the two and show you how it works. But done talking about that, hopefully you have your own API set up here now. What you're going to do, just go ahead and copy that API you see right there. And then we're going to save that for later. We're going to save it into a variable they had in my recording software. <laughs> uh, so, first of all, we are going to be using two non-standard libraries, it looks like, from or in, in Python. So we have date time, we have JSON, and yeah, so the date time and JSON are both um, non-standard, or they are standard, they are included with the Python. Um, standard libraries and then we have pandas and requests so in order to get those if you don't have them already just go ahead in any console window I like to use PowerShell usually um, right now I'm just in the I guess it is a PowerShell window but I'm in the integrated console within VS Code which is one reason one of the reasons I really like this ID it's really nice it makes everything really clear and you get a little console window but in order to get those if you don't have them already Go ahead, do pip install, and then requests. And it's going to say requirement already satisfied because I already do have that. And then it's going to tell me I need to upgrade my pip, which I'll do that later. <laughs> and then the other one is going to be pandas, which is where we're going to create that data frame. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pip install pandas. And again, it's going to say, you already have this. I'm like, thanks, but you also need to upgrade them. No oh, thanks. Okay. We're going to go ahead, get rid of this for now, skip to the code. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste all of the imports here and then go over what they are. So really quickly, requests, what that is, that's what we're going to use to actually call the API to get this right here. Request exceptions, we're going to import the exceptions so that way it makes our code a little bit cleaner makes it easier if we were to actually um, show this to other people or have other people use it. Any of the code I show you in my channel, by the way, totally free. You don't have to pay me. Don't, there's no commission on it. That's, that's how code works. If I'm showing, I'm giving it to you. So a high five would be nice. A like would be nice. So definitely, definitely do that. But <laughs> don't PayPal or Venmo or anything. All I need is just you, you watching, and I appreciate that. Um, so these are going to be the requests or the imports, and then JSON, we're gonna use that, we're actually going to use that for, to get the data um, and make it a little bit more cleaner in order for the, um, in order for the, the program to actually like see and be able to read it as well. 
So what we're going to get, we're going to get the API as back as a JSON, and then we're going to read it into a data frame, and then create that CSV that I show you. So that's pretty much what this first part is. Um, and then date time, we're just going to use this for one thing. That's going to be this next line right here. We're actually going to create a date so that, as you saw before, it was still in here. Yeah, we're going to have the file saved as, and then that's going to be the date it was saved. So that way you have kind of like a timestamp. You can add a timestamp as well. Definitely look up the documentation for date time, but I'm just going to do it because, like I said, I only use this once or twice a day. So it makes it pretty easy to organize the data. So we're going to go ahead and create that today variable using the date time module and today and create a string from that. We're going to do month dash. Dying at the percent here. Percent month, percent day, and percent year. Yeah. Big difference between capital M and capital and uh, lowercase m, so make sure you get that very right or else you're going to get some weird date formatting. Uh, very important right there. And just to go and show you how the date should look, I'm going to go ahead and just print that variable, variable out for you. See here at the bottom. Yep. Awesome. We're going to go ahead and continue. So this next part here, I'm just going to copy and paste this part but I will explain to you what's going on here. So pretty much what we have here is first it's calling on the API itself. And then that's going to be the URL for the one that we're getting. And you can add parameters. Like I said, you'll find all this in the documentation, but we're going to say start from number one and only go up to number 5,000. What those numbers are is it's pretty much listing. Um, let me see if I can go back to that web page. So we're going to go back to clean market cap here. So what it's listing is right here, coin market cap has their own listing. And there's a, there's an equation or a way that they make the listing, that the way that they list these. I don't exactly know what it is anymore. Um, I did remember what it is, but you can find it somewhere. You can find it. Um, I don't remember where to be honest. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely find it on their website if you're interested. For me, it really doesn't matter. Um, I just want to be able to get the top 5,000 listings, which you'll have already plenty of information, plenty of data that you can search through. But that's kind of what that works. That's what that's saying. And then through here, the headers, it's like saying accept using the JSON application, get that data. And then this XCMC Pro API. That's where you're going to put your own API key that we created. So that's going to be pretty much just go ahead and copy and paste from here and just drop that in there. And this you're going to want to have a dictionary. So both of these will be a dictionary. You're going to pass those in a second into that, um, into that request call. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Next we have session here. So what we're doing is we're calling session from the request module and then we're saying, Hey, just put that in a um, in a variable so now we have a session data type and then we're going to go ahead and use that session we're going to call the headers and we're going to say update the headers using the headers which is right here that dictionary that's kind of connecting there you can see that's what it's connecting and then next we're actually going to use the call itself so what we're doing here this is really important this is this is where all the fun begins is we're going to say response equals the session and get the URL, but use these parameters. So again, our parameters for the URL, we have the URL saying get the latest and then the parameters saying, but only get the latest from number one to number 5,000 of that list. And then after that, we're gonna say with data using the um, a variable called data, we're gonna say call that JSON and say load the response dot text. That's gonna give us a whole bunch of data. I'm gonna go ahead and print it out for you here in one second, but we also have, this is a try accept, um, try accept, not looped. What's the word I'm looking for? I accept statement. So it is a try accept statement. So we're gonna say accept, meaning if you get either a connection error, a timeout, or the accept is saying, 
try this if nothing in here works. Um, what you're going to do is say, if you get a connection error, a timeout, or too many redirects, go ahead and just print this. So that's going to be uh, if you don't have internet connection, if you've already used all your API calls for the month or day, if um, there's too many re redirects, so if your request is just bouncing around too many times, anything like that, you'll get this connection or timeout error. Try again. Usually if it happens, go ahead and just like check the basic stuff, check your internet, anything like that. But um, go ahead and definitely go back into it and it should work the second time. If not, come back and dislike this video and then let me know what's up. I'll get you figured and set up and then we'll go ahead and um, hopefully you can like the video, turn your dislike into a like. So, just going to take a quick water break. So, and our next thing, actually before I do that, we're going to go ahead and print our data. And I'm going to show you the mess of, the wonderful mess of uh, things we have going on here. So, I'm going to print the data, it's going to call the data, and go ahead control C, stop that, try to stop that, it didn't, fine. But yeah, in this mess of data you can see there's actually, um, a lot of a lot of things going on so this is all the data that we had it's just pretty fine which is what we have this this next area for so let me try to find one here to show you um, it's very difficult so actually here yeah we have a theory so uh, all in this this area this area so this whole listing this whole listing actually got to get the ID in there this is going to show you everything for ethereum so we have the the name, like the symbol, the rank that it was in, the coin market cap rank, the quote of it, and all the pricing information, which is really important. So we're gonna go ahead and figure out what is going on in all this. That's gonna be our next section here. I'm gonna go ahead and skip. And we're gonna create a data frame to store all this information in. So right now it's just kind of one blob of dictionaries and that from that JSON file. We're going to go ahead and convert that JSON file into a um, little bit more readable, but then we're going to make it even more readable. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Data frame equals PD dot data frame. And we're going to say from the variable data, get data. Because if you call this all at once, um, what it looks like is it's pretty much just like a bunch of dictionaries and lists and dictionaries. What we're doing is we're grabbing that data object right now from the data variable. So we're going to do that. And now we have a whole bunch of variables coming your way. First of all, we have number equals zero. You'll see why we, we're going to use that in a second. We have prices. I'm going to make prices a list, not a dictionary. Volumes is going to be equal to an empty list. Day changes equals list again. I'm good at typing. Month changes equals to list. And market caps equals to list. You notice that we don't have the prices in here because what we're let me try to pull it up again. So the price is actually in a nested dictionary um, called a quote. So we're going to go ahead and grab that nested dictionary after we go through and find all this data, which is going to be down here. But what we're going to do here now is we're going to have a while loop. So while I'll actually just copy and paste this over here and explain it because that'll be better for you, better for time as well. I'm trying to keep these videos a little short, which is why I'm talking so fast. So. If ever you need me to slow down, go ahead, drop something in the comments. But I'm trying to keep these short and sweet with like jam packed with information. But what we have here is we have so we have a while loop, and we have while the number is less than five thousand, go ahead and try. There's our try accept raising again. Um, go ahead, try and coin data equals data and data from number. So we have that number because it's a listing. So what it's doing is it's going to say, grab number one, grab number two, grab number three. 
and that's what all of this is. You can see there's a little, uh, let me see if I can find one. So it's not going to be the ID because the ID is in it, but there's like a little number you can't see right now um, that's in the data frame. So it's going to grab all that and say from in that data frame, it's in the index. That's what that first column in the data frame is. So it's grabbing the index and it's saying grab this, grab this, grab this. It does that for each one and it grabs it for everyone. So we have fin data quote, which we're going to kind of save for later. And then we have um, price data, price, price, price. So what all this is from is this is actually from that fin data. So we have fin data, convert it into price data. And then we have the USD. That's where that is because it's a nested dictionary. It's going to actually have that. So we're going to add all that. And then after all this, after the market cap, after all the financial data, we're going to go ahead and append that to the price. So prices append the price. So how this works is we have the price variable that we pulled from the financial data, from the data frame, from the JSON file. I'm gonna go ahead and do all that. And then at the end here, we're going to say prices, call that list, append to price. So we're gonna do that for volumes, day changes, and so on. And then very important at the same, at the end here, so that you don't keep calling that same number over and over and over and over and get stuck in an endless loop. You wanna have that number equals number plus one. So that's gonna change this variable going to come back up right here, start there, and then it's going to keep going. And if at any time there's an error or anything, except pass, what it's going to do is it's going to say, if um, anything in this area doesn't work, we're just going to skip on. So nine times out of 10, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, it'll work. So it shouldn't be an issue there. That's how that's going to work. Copy and paste this next section here. We're still working with that same data frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call that data frame and we're going to say, hey, we're going to name this frame, this um, column. This is what this is doing. It's creating a column called price. And we're going to say, let's name that column price and go ahead and equal the price as the list in there. So what Pandas, this is a Pandas call, what we're doing right now, the data frame object. Um, it's going to take every price in that price list and go bang, 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 and add all 5,000 of them because that's the call that we made. So it's going to do that. And then in this next one, I'm going to type this out. We're going to create another variable called drop calls. And then we're going to make this variable a list. So we have ID. Actually, before I do this, I'm going to explain why we do this. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and print. Um, data frame dot columns and yeah you will actually be able to see here's what I'll do I'll print the columns and then we'll go ahead and print the head for you this will show you pretty much everything that's not what I pretty much everything that we uh, have done so far All right. get rid of this nastiness go down here oh I still have that print call in there data oops get rid of that if you still have that we don't need we really don't need any of these print calls except for the one we're gonna put in at the end here so what we have here is we have print df columns what that did was that took the name of every column went ahead and printed it there's some in there that we don't need and then df head what that does is by default it prints the first 10 um 10 rows of the data frame that's going to show you kind of what it looks like right now we don't need all of, so it's going to show you right here everything um the quote is what we're going to be focusing on next we don't need though all the um all the data or all the columns in here right now so we have id we don't need that that's a coin market cap internal thing we don't need slug anymore just because it's useless since we already have the name and symbol we don't need market pair we will keep market pairs actually we don't need data added um that's not necessary we don't need the quote anymore because what this loop did is it pulled all the data out of that nested dictionary that the quote was so you can see we have the price and volume for everything 
So, in that next one, that drop calls, we're gonna go ahead and do ID. And what we're doing now is we're creating a list of these columns that we have right here. And we're going to drop those. We're gonna tell Pandas to get rid of those. Slug. You wanna make sure you spell everything right, right here. <laughs> or else it ain't gonna work. And I probably should explain these as I go along too, the ones I haven't. Um, I'm just not very good at talking and typing at the same time. But what we have here is the columns we're going to be getting rid of. We're going to be getting rid of the um, ID column, which is right here. The slug, which is right there. Again, we already have that information. Data added, not needed for a data analysis. Platform. That just shows what's platform it's based on. Most of these will be Ethereum, like the Ethereum blockchain. So we don't really need that. You can keep that if you want that for like how many are based on the Ethereum blockchain. I don't need it for mine. We have last updated, which again, you don't really need to use. Um, it might be helpful if you want to see which coins are the most active or anything like that, which coins are still being updated, still being maintained. Um, but we also have quote, which you definitely don't need. Go ahead, drop that. Get rid of that. It's going to make the data frame look really nasty. You just you can see here it has all this data, which we already pulled out right there. So we're going to go ahead and drop those, and then we're going to say create a new data frame. But go ahead and drop columns that are in the data frame, and the ones we're dropping are drop calls. And then really important, make sure you have the index argument in here as well. Or the access one. Uh, access there is. Access equals one. What that's saying is drop the columns in that first axis being the columns. So we have access zero being the, the rows, access one being columns. So it's going to drop everything right up there. We're going to go ahead and print that data frame again for you. And as I'm doing this, as a reminder, be very careful with what you um what you're using what you're doing right now because every time you call this as it is we do have our uh, our API key in there so every time you call this command every time you call this it's going to use another 25 credits which like I said you have plenty but just keep that in mind and we're gonna do df.columns again run that script and show you what's going on okay. so I went ahead and we knocked out the slug, we knocked out the date added, the quote, and we already have a much cleaner data frame here with, you know, things you can actually look at. Now we have tags in there. Tags are really cool. They're something super helpful. You can see if a coin's mineable. You can see what kind of security it uses, just like some things about it. Like you see the USDT is a stable coin. So some really cool things that it, I like to have that in there so you can actually, you can use this to pretty much like count. This is what's going on. Um, this is how many of coin is mineable, so even further your analysis if you'd like to do that as well. But you can also see here in our index, looks a lot, a lot nicer than it did before up here. So we have what, just all this random stuff in here now, again cleaner, we only have what we need there. So again, making it much nicer. That's what those two lines are doing right there for you. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to create a variable named file name. So. We're going to use that in a second here. File name equals, and get a string, call it cryptos, and do some string concatenation here. Cryptos plus our variable today. So we're going to call on that again. No parentheses around that because, or no uh, quotations, because that's not a string, that's an actual variable. It is a string, it is a variable in a string. So that's very important. You want to make sure that this variable still comes out as a string because this is the file name that we're going to be feeding into Pandas to say, hey, name that data frame this file name. So the last one is we need the .csv. Again, very important. That's going to tell um, whatever platform you're on, whether it's Windows, 
on Linux, whatever you're on, it's going to tell that that this is a CSV file. It can be opened in Excel or whatever, um, whatever like statistical hmm, spreadsheet program that you're using. <laughs> Forget words, but that's the word we were looking for. Um, so yeah, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and print and say, oh, one last thing I forgot there. Very important. <laughs> so we're going to say DF2 CSV. And in this one line here, we're going to go ahead and call the file name. And technically, this doesn't need any arguments, but we have that file name so you can actually find what the file is now. So that's cool there. And we're going to go ahead and do print. And do a string here. We're going to say research done. File saved as string formatting. And just go ahead and dot format and drop our file name into that. We're going to go ahead and run this one more time. And instead of printing everything, it just goes ahead and prints cryptos. 053121. Let me go ahead and add a dash in there. It makes it look cleaner for the file name. But going back into that, you can see we now have cryptos 53121, and that's going to be our most recent call. So here we go. Everything right here, market cap, all this good stuff. And again, you can start doing your research. And if we go ahead way down to the 5,000th row, we do have our 5,000th coin among the many other thousands. So this is pretty cool here. The last part of this though, I'm gonna go ahead and skip down a few more lines. We're gonna go ahead and ask for a user input here now. So, user coin, actually I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up as well. I'm gonna do that backslash n. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna add two lines. I'm going to add a line on top, our string, our text, and then a line on the bottom that's going to make it really clear in the console because this is a CLI based program that we're writing here. So we're going to do user coin equals input, and then the string is going to tell them what to do. And then this upper at the end, what that's doing is it's a string, so we can add that right on to the string method. Um, that's saying whatever input we have that the user puts in, make it uppercase, and that way it'll make it really easy for the uh, for the data frame to find it. You don't need to because I don't believe it's case sensitive, but it just makes it easier. It makes it so like ETH. If we're going to do Ethereum again, if you just type in say ETH it's going to get that back instead. So that's what that up is doing. We're going to go ahead though, have a loop in here or an if else statement and say if user coin is equal equal to string of one. Again, important, make sure it's a string of one and not the integer one. If it's the integer one, um, this is never going to work because we're giving it or we're, we're receiving a string back from the user. So make sure your one is in String, single or double quotation doesn't really matter here. We're gonna say print. Uh, no more research. And a frowny face. <laughs> but else here. If it doesn't equal one, we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this. Try accept statement here. And need to fix my and that should work. Formatting. 
this is why you don't copy and paste code. Like I said, I'm only doing this for the sake of time, but a lot of errors happen when you copy and paste. Oh, that's oh. like that, and that's like that, yep. So, what this loop did that I just copied and pasted it saying, if user coin is equal to one, stop right there and just print no more research. But if it's not, go ahead and try and see if the coin symbol is equal to or the coin symbol is creating what this is doing is it's pulling a um pulling the coin symbol from the data frame so what this is saying is the coin symbol is equal to data frame data frame symbol that um where is it this one in symbol it searches all the symbols real quick and it's saying if it's equal to user coin we're going to go ahead and do the rest of this but if it's not we're just going to go ahead and print coin not found if it is equal we're going to go ahead and say hey all right coin name equal to a string of coin symbol the name so that's going to be right here iloc dot iloc that's a um pandas call so what we're going to do is we're going to say just print that first one in that list the zero zero starts with or the um the list is starting with zero so we're getting that first name and then coin price is going to be equal to a lot of string formatting here so or a lot of like stuff going on here so we have equals to the dollar sign plus the string of the float of the coin symbol of the price what's going on here i know this is a bit confusing is um first if i break this down first coin price it goes ahead and it searches the coin symbol which we're going to use on um, bitcoin as our example here it goes ahead and it says all right symbol and the name so the symbol we're going to go ahead and search the price we found price it's 36 7 point or it's 36 7 9 4 point all that nonsense what it does then is it goes ahead and it turns it into a float because remember this is all string right now the reason we have a float and not an integer is a float allows you to have these decimals so with that we're going to have the decimals and then we're going to say hey with that float right here go ahead and round it we're using that round method or float go ahead and round it to two decimal points because that's just how money works it has two decimal points and then make sure make sure your parentheses are very very much like entwined here so you want to make sure everything's looking right um I feel like that should be with that one and round it does use parentheses so keep that as well keep that one right there and then we're saying once we have that float down to two decimal points Go ahead, create it as a string, add that, um, I just punched the mic, sorry. <laughs> add that as a string, and then add the uh, dollar sign on here. And then that's gonna print the coin price, or it's gonna store that coin price in the variable. Same with coin supply, it's gonna do the same thing, give us an integer there. Um, the reason that gives us an integer is because it just makes it easier. Sometimes the coin supply you'll see is like, all these random numbers, like all these very long decimals. We don't really care about that, at least I don't care about that. You can keep it if you want, but I just want like a solid number for the integer. And then the rest, we are going to do that. So we are going to keep that as float, have it round, keep that as float. You can keep these, excuse me, <laughs> you can keep these as floats and it's not going to matter. Um, all that that's doing right there is it's just going to, whenever we feed it into our, uh, into our formatting down here, it's just going to leave it and you or the new user aren't going to really notice anything different that this is a float and this is a string the reason we did that is just so we could add that dollar sign you can add the dollar sign if you want what I did there um, but after all that we're going to go ahead and in this print statement here we're going to say this has a current price of blink get out of there and has changed blink since yesterday currently has a supply of blink and a market me off and stop moving the mouse and a market cap of um whatever whatever also has a 90 day change of blank percent so because this is very very confusing i'm actually going to help you out here and redo this so we're gonna do a triple crazy right triple um quotation marks and what that's doing is it's telling python hey everything in this is a line including the line breaks 
They can do enter, enter, enter. And that would print a bunch of blank lines. Four or five, whatever that was. We're going to do it this way. This way it makes it nice and clean. Kind of like... I don't know if we have... No, we don't have it anymore. <laughs> but if you remember how clean that first, um, that first section looked. So what we're going to do here, first of all, we're going to type out the string format. So we're going to use brackets to tell Python, I'm going to put something in here. So we're going to say blank has a current price of blank and has change. We could have a spell. Blank percent Keep the same format I have over there. And blank also has a 90 day change of hurrahs. Bada bing, bada bing. Awesome. So now we're going to do a new line. I'm going to go ahead after this and do dot format and this is where we're calling this is why I want to type it out because it can get very confusing pretty much we're doing like ad libs in Python with variables so <laughs> I actually will be doing a video that a more fun one this is pretty fun but that's gonna be more of like a haha -ha type of thing but this one in here um, we're just gonna add the variables that we've created so it's gonna do that for just this one we're not gonna loop for every variable so we have the coin symbol uh, or coin name we have um, so coin name and then you want to make sure we have so before I go any further we have one two three four five six seven to make a mental note we have seven variables in here we need to fill that with seven variables down here in the format the so coin name second one coin price has a current price of and has changed. We have one day change percent since yesterday, and we're going to just keep this going. And currently has a supply of coin supply. And this is why you want to make sure those variables are uh, named pretty well, not just for other other programmers, but also for you as well. So it's not just variable one, variable two, and you're like, what the hell is that? What am I putting in here? So. Makes it really easy here. Um, we're going to go ahead and say that one over there in front of also has a coin name. So again, we're getting our coin name. We're saying Bitcoin or whatever it is. Also has a 90 day percent of coin month change. It's actually a 90 day change. I just did that for the sake of the variable. Um, I could have had 90 month instead, but I just did that so it looked a little bit nicer. Well, you can see what we have here. We're actually just calling that, so coin name, coin name, coin price, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've all seven. Once all that's done, it's going to go ahead and print that out. And also going back up to the try accept statement, it's going to try this. And if it doesn't, if it can't find the coin here, it's going to go ahead and just print coin not found. We're going to go ahead and save this, and should be all good. Go ahead and print that, or run that, print that. There we go. So we have select a coin for more info, or enter wonder quit. I'm going to enter wonder, wonder. And it's going to say no more research, that fit. Run it one more time, and I'm going to pretend, um, suck. I don't think that's a coin name. We're going to do stuff. Yep. And it says coin not found. But this time we're going to do, uh, we're going to do stellar. 
I'm gonna do XRP. And oops. Do that right. XML. XML, I think. Where was XRP? XLM. I don't remember what that one was. Um anyway, we're gonna do Bitcoin because I do remember Bitcoin. <laughs> so we're gonna get a oh no. So it's actually an issue with my code. Let me go ahead and see what's up. Here. Hopefully you had fun watching me struggle. Um, <laughs> so, before I continue, this should work now. One of the benefits of the try accept statement is that because um, because what it's doing is it's trying every every command in this area. Um, it's going line by line and trying that, and it's saying if anything in here doesn't work, just stop right now and go ahead to the accept. And what it was doing, the issue I found is that this error here, this replacement index six out of range, what that means is that it's saying, hey, I see you have seven different places for variables here, but you don't have seven variables down here. And it was kind of like, it was confusing it. So it was saying you need to add another one pretty much. So what I did was I went ahead in here and looked and I counted again. And I know I mentioned before, I was like, we have seven, make sure we have seven. I was a dummy and didn't count, we only had six there. So when I go ahead and run this, um, we should have everything working now. So, go ahead. Um, we already tried the other two, so we're going to try XRP because I swear that's something. Uh, I did not work now. I don't have my alt statement in there. Again. <laughs> okay. That's good. Um, so I need something in there, it's telling me. So the reason that didn't work is because I didn't have the else statement in there. So I just said if user coin equals one. And it's like, alright, it didn't equal one, so I'm just gonna stop. So that's why that's why I didn't get an output. Here we go. This should work. So we're gonna do XRP one last time. There we go. <laughs> so XRP is the current price of all this. Um, it actually didn't format because I believe in our data frame XRP, the coin has the same name as the uh, as the other thing itself. So we're gonna go ahead and like, the symbol is the same as the name, but we're gonna go try, I'm trying to think of a good one. Why don't we do the legendary Doge? We're gonna do Doge, there it is. Doge coin has a pr price of 32 cents. And there we go. So we are finally working. I don't know why that simple little error took me so long, but it's fine. Um, I will post the GitHub link to the code in here, or if you don't want to cheat, if you want to go ahead and try to figure out what's going on before, you can go ahead and rewatch this video if you want. But this is here for you. This is here for. It's really cool. Like I like I was showing you earlier, there's a lot you can do within the data frame itself. Um, you can get different averages. You can get like different standard deviation. You can get all kinds of information about the coins so this way it'll better research better your your 
knowledge, I guess, of all the cryptocurrencies out there. So, hope you got something out of this. I know I got something out of this, figuring out how to debug my code a little bit more. So, always improving, always learning more. Thanks for watching.